हेलो एवरीबॉडी दिस इज डॉक्टर विशाल त्रिवेदी फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बायो साइंसेज एंड बायो इंजीनियरिंग आई आई टी गुवाहाटी एंड इन व्हाट वी वर डिस्कसिंग वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर मॉड्यूल वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द बेसिक्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस फॉलोड बाय द वर्टिकल जेल इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस हॉरिजॉन्टल जेल इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस एंड देन इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द डिफरेंट वेरिएंट्स ऑफ द जेल इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस एंड देन अल्टीमेटली वी हैव ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द सम ऑफ द रिसर्च प्रॉब्लम्स वेयर यू कैन बी एबल टू यूटिलाइज द इलेक्ट्रोफोरेसिस एज अ टूल to answer those questions and in this particular series now today we are also going to discuss few more experiments and few more research problems and uh, while discussing this research, this research problems you will be able to understand more and more uh, potential of the electrophoresis to solve the research problems related to your work so the first problem today what we are going to see is and this is a old problem what we have discussed before also that the scientist have discovered a transcription factor and in the skin cells bind to the set of gene x which is responsible for changing its color due to the exposure to the sunlight now they would like to identify the transcription factor from the skin cells uh what they want to do is uh, if you remember in the previous uh, lecture what we uh, we we what we have discussed that the they were interested to identify the transcription factor and then on the top they are also interested how the uh, the dna as well how the dna as well as this transcription factor is interacting with each other so as we i think discussed that the uh, the gene uh, structure is uh, made up of a promoter and then you have the coding regions so this coding region is not responsible for binding of the transcription factor only the promoter region is responsible for binding of the transcription factor and with in the in this event what will happen is that the dna is making a complex with the protein and as a result it is forming a dna protein complex now if you see how it is can be it how this uh, interaction can be mapped with the help of the electrophoresis so in the experimental design what we have we have the two molecules one is dna the other one is the protein and what they are doing is they are interacting with each other to form the dna protein complex now let's assume that the dna is a, of the molecular weight of 1 unit and the protein is also of a molecular weight of the 1 unit which means the Uh, the dna protein in, uh, complex is going to have the molecular weight of 2 units now let's assume that the dna if you if you if you do the electrophoresis of these three molecules then the electrophoretic mobility of dna is x the electrophoretic mobility of y is uh, the protein is y then and the dna protein complex is z then the question comes whether the x is going to be bigger to the z or x is going to be the smaller to the z which means whether the dna is going to be uh, run faster than the dna what is present in the complex or whether the dna what is present is going to be run slower than the dna what is present in the complex as obvious that the uh, the molecular weight of the dna protein complex is bigger so it is actually going to run on a slower side which means that the uh, the dna is going to have the higher electrophoretic mobility compared to the dna what is present in the protein because as you remember that the mobile the electrophoretic mobility in the gel electrophoresis is directly proportional to the char and the inversely proportional to the molecular weight so this means if you have a smaller molecular weight you are going to run faster and you are going to have a larger distance you will cover the larger distance whereas the uh, if you have a bigger molecular weight then you are going to for, uh, run the smaller distances so this uh, interaction of the protein and dna is been mapped with a technique or with a assay which is called as the gel mobility shift assay in this technique uh, 
and this technique is relies on the fact that a small DNA has a much higher mobility in gel electrophoresis than what is bound to the protein. So, what you can see is if I am running the electrophoresis or if I am doing the electrophoresis of the DNA alone, the DNA will run up to this point. But if I keep adding the protein molecules, the protein molecules are actually binding to the protein uh, to the DNA and as a result it is actually reducing its electrophoretic mobility. Now imagine that the, the DNA what you are putting it for the electrophoresis is 100 kilo Dalton okay? and the protein what we are putting is a 25 kilo Dalton. Now see when you are running the DNA alone it is actually having a molecular weight of 100 kilo Dalton. But when you are adding the small amount of protein, it is actually the one molecule of the protein. If the one molecule of protein is interacting with the DNA, the resultant molecular weight is going to be 125 kilo Dalton. Similarly, if the two molecules of the protein will interact, then it is going to have the molecular weight of 150 kilo Dalton. And if the three molecules of the protein are going to interact, it is actually going to have the 170 kilo Dalton as a molecular weight which means as the more and more protein molecules will bind to this DNA uh, molecule the resultant molecular weight of the complex is going to be keep increasing which means you can be able to map the interaction between the two molecules simply by looking at the molecular mass. So, for performing this experiment what you are supposed to do you have to first prepare the cell lysate you have to do the incubation reactions where you are actually going to incubate the DNA plus the protein okay? and then you are going to then the uh, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis and that actually is going to give you the resultant retardation of the DNA bands. The material reagents, the material and the equipment what you required. So, the first reagent what you required is the labeling uh, reaction mixtures so that you will be able to label the DNA because how you are going to my how you are going to monitor the migration of uh, or retardation of the DNA molecule is that you actually going to label the DNA with a uh, radioactive material. So, in this case we are using the P32 uh, labeled uh, oligonucleotides. So, what you are going to do is you are going to take the oligonucleotides, you are going to run the, uh, the uh, 10x uh, PNK reaction buffers and then you are going to add the enzyme that uh, T4 uh, polynucleotide kinase and then you are going to add the alpha 32 labels ATP and the double distilled water and uh, this uh, labeling reactions uh, is going to be catalyzed and then it is actually going to label the DNA molecule which is the oligonucleotide which you are going to use in the gel shift assays. You also need the binding assay buffer. So, the composition of the binding assay buffer is given here which actually mostly contains the buffers then you have the reducing agents and then you have the EDTA so that you should not uh, you, you should take care of the uh, the contaminating uh, uh, metals and all that and then you need the resolving buff the buffer which you are going to use for running the uh, page so 5x TBA buffer where you are going to have the tris, boric acid and EDTA and then the funnel volume what you are going to make up to the 1 liter and then you need to prepare the uh, recipe for the non denaturating page gel so where you are going to take the acrylamide water. TB, then APS and TIMID are going to be added as the uh, polymerization agent and then you require the sense as well as the antisense the oligonucleotides so that you can be able to design the, uh, the oligonucleotides. And then uh, in the instruments what you require you need a gel electrophoresis system and as well as the microfuge, microfuge means you require a small centrifuge so that you will be able to pellet down the reaction mixtures. This can be done in a multi steps. So, in the step 1 you are going to prepare the labeled probe. So, the labeled probe can be prepared by multiple ways and that all we are going to discuss in detail when we are going to discuss the sudden plotting and so, uh, so for time being you can just simply uh, understand that you are going to add the 
you are going to take the oligonucleotides, you are going to add the radioactivity or radio labeled uh, ATP and then you are just simply going to add the PNK and that actually is going to catalyze the reactions to add the radioactive uh, uh, ATP to the oligonucleotides. So, here you are going to take the two oligonucleotide, one is the sense oligonucleotide, the other one is the antisense oligonucleotide, so that you can be able to design a double standard DNA. So, uh, for example, uh, we have given you a sequence of the sense and antisense oligonucleotides. So, this is the sense strand, this is the antisense strand uh, which we which you can use and this is the sequence which is actually going to bind or which is going to facilitate the binding of the protein. So, that is the region which you have to keep in the center of this particular sequence so that there will be adequate amount of nucleotides will be available on both the sides so that the protein could be able to sit on top of this particular sequence and will be able to bind very nicely. Then you have to do the uh, you know several steps uh, of doing the labeling reactions and then ultimately you have to purify the labeled nucleotide by the gel filtration column uh, using the G50 columns and uh, this column is pre-equilibrated with the uh, buffer so that you will be able to uh, remove the the excess, excess uh, radioactivity from the radio labeled nucleotides. So, once your uh, labeled probe is ready, then you have to go to the step 2. So, in the step 2, you have to set up the reactions. So, for the setting of the binding reactions, what you have to do is you have to take up the nuclear uh, protein extracts are incubated with the labeled probe. While setting up the binding reactions, the following components are added in the given order under the ice cold conditions. So, this is very important that you do all these experiments under the uh, low temperature conditions so that there will be no degradation of the DNA or there will be no degradation of the protein as well. Because either of these uh, degradations are going to compromise the overall effects. So, what you need is you need uh, uh, the uh, Salmon sperm DNA, which you are going to prepare in a DPC treated water. So, DPC treated water is a water which is uh, free of the RNA, so that there will be no uh, degradation of the RNA if, if at all the RNA is present, because that actually is going to mask the signal or what you are going to get from the DNA. Then you also need the binding buffers, so the composition of the binding buffer has already been given in the previous slide. Then you have to prepare the nuclear extracts, so you have to add the x microliter of nuclear extract, so that depends on the what kind of activity is present in your sample and all that. Then you require the labeled probe, so this nuclear extract is actually going to be the source of the protein, because the nuclear extract is going to have the transcription factor so that you are interested to uh, test and then you have to make up the volume with the double distilled water. So, after uh, uh, the addition of the all the components over the eyes, the tubes are spinned briefly in microfuge so that you can be able to collect all the reaction mixtures and then they are incubated for 45 minutes at 40 uh, at 25 degrees Celsius, so that there will be uh, interaction of the uh, transcription factors what is present in the nuclear extract with the oligonucleotide which is we are adding and then it is actually going to form the complex. In this there will be a variation that for the super shift experiments, so super shift experiments are the experiment where you are also being interested that which protein is actually binding. So, in those cases what you can do is you can simply add the antibodies directed against a particular transcription factor, so that you will be able to not know only that the proteins are binding, but also which protein is binding. So, those kind of experiments are called super shift experiment, because in a normal shift, normal gel shift assay what you are going to do is you are going to see a gradual in, uh, retardation of the DNA or gradual moving of the DNA on the upper si upward side. But in the super shift experiment as soon as you add the, uh, the antibodies, the antibodies are going to, uh, to increase the molecular weight of the complex very high. So, because of that it is actually going to give you additional shift into the uh, retardations. 
So the two microgram of the respective antibody is added to the binding reactions before prior to the added addition of the labeled probe because of that it is actually going to label or it is going to bind the protein or the transcription factor of your interest. So because of that it is actually going to show you the super shift which means in a normal uh, thing what you have is you have a DNA here and then it will gradually go actually. Whereas in the super shift what will happen is you have a DNA here and then it will show a very large jump in terms of shift because uh, here you only have the protein whereas here you have the protein as well as the antibody so and that actually is going to increase the uh, the molecular weight in a very very large uh, uh, quantity so it will actually going to add up a lot in terms of the final protein dna complex what is going to be formed so this mixture was incubated for 20 minutes and then the labeled probe is added and incubation are carrying out for another 45 minutes. So the only difference between a normal gel shift assay as well as the super shift assay is that you have to add the antibodies prior to adding the oligonote right so that the antibodies will go and bind to their respective target proteins and then if those proteins are go and bind to your DNA they are actually going to show you the super shifts. Then the step 3 you have to do the analysis of the reaction so once the analysis incubation periods are over then what you have to do is you have to take these samples and then you have to analyze them onto the 5% non denaturating polyacrylamide gels. Uh, in each well you can, you can resolve the 20 microliter of the reaction mixture uh, and to monitor the progress of the gel a tube containing the labeled probe alone together with the dye bromophenol blue is added in one of the lanes so that you will be able to do you will be able to see how long the DNA will migrate if the protein component is not available because that will be your reference point how much you how much shift of the uh, DNA band you are look, getting when you are adding the nuclear extracts. Uh, then the 5x TB is, is uh, used as a running buffer the gel is run at the 50 volts uh, constants uh, and it has to be done in a cold condition so that there will be no degradation of the DNA because if there will be a degradation of the DNA that also is going to give you a gradual decrease in molecular weight and so that also is going to give you a smear like condition. So if there will be a DNA degradation what will happen is the DNA will be here and then you are going to see a lot of bands and that actually is going to mask the actual DNA samples. Even if you have a sample of DNA here, it is actually going to be masked by that degraded, degradation of the, uh, the DNA probe what you have added in the reaction mixture. So because of that, it is important that you should keep the DNA in a very, very stable conditions and you should, when even when you are resolving the samples, you also should resolve it in a in a cold condition so that the, there will be no degradations. After completion of the electrophoresis the gel is dried up by wrapping it in the gel wrap and it is exposed to a sensitive x-ray film for 1 to 3 days. Band can be seen after developing the film and densitometrically analyzed using image J softwares. So the image, image analysis anyway we have discussed in a detail so that you can be able once you have the digital image you can be able to utilize uh, many softwares what we have discussed uh, before also that uh, you know either you, you can use the image J or any other commercial softwares what are available from the different companies. Uh, let us see uh, what result you are going to see. So the in the results section the positive autoradiograph shows that the positive binding experiments which means what you can see in a typical experiment that when you are running the probe alone it is actually going to run in a very very far away from the from your lane. But as you increase or as you put the nuclear extract what will happen is that band is going to be keep moving towards the upper side which means the proteins are now binding in a very very low quantity and then ultimately the whole protein is bound and what you see is actually there will be a separation which means 
what you see is the kind of the curve which means at this stage the whole DNA what you have added is being saturated by the proteins which are present in the nuclear extract. Now how you can be able to verify this? You can be able to verify this simply by adding the cold uh, uh, oligonucleotides. So what will happen if you add the cold nucleotides? Uh, the cold nucleotide is going to compete with the protein what is bound here and because of that it is actually going to release the bound oligonucleotide which is the labeled oligonucleotide. So what will happen is that you will be keep observing the band at the bottom. So if you are going to form the protein complexes and then if you add the cold oligonucleotide, what is mean by the cold oligonucleotide is the unlabeled oligonucleotide. So that unlabeled oligonucleotide is going to compete with the complex and it is going to release the radio labeled oligonucleotide. And in that process you are going to uh, again going to see the reappearance of the, the radio labeled uh, oligonucleotide. Because that the protein is making a complex with DNA is giving you the protein DNA complex. But if you add the uh, probe which is not radio labeled, so this probe is actually radio labeled that is why you have a radio labeled complex. So if you add the, uh, the probe or the DNA which is not radio labeled, so what will happen is that this protein is going to be fractionate between the labeled probe versus the unlabeled probe. So ultimately what will happen is it is actually going to start forming the, the complex with the unlabeled probe and the labeled probe is now going to be released from the reactions and this labeled probe is again going to be electrophorate or it is going to have the similar kind of electrophoretic mobility what the free probe is having. So that is why you are actually going to see the reappearance of the labeled probe. So that is a kind of a verification that this is a specific uh, uh, interactions. On the top if you are more interested what you can do also is you can simply block the sites which is present on to the DNA as well with the help of different types of antibodies and in those cases the protein what you are going to add will not be able to interact. So these are the different way in which you are going to get the result and in which you can be able to verify the results. So with this uh, I would like to conclude our lecture here. In our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more problems related to electrophoresis.